last Sunday afternoon, uh, Cindy and I had the opportunity to go over to Grant. Uh, our nephew was receiving his Eagle Scout Award, and uh, I'm kind of an old boy scout, so that was just a great celebration, good time for us to go. Uh, Cindy's sister and family lives there in Grant, so we knew them, but the added bonus was that Cindy's mother and two brothers were coming from Colorado also for uh, the awards ceremony. So it's just a time to get together with some of her family. Well, the awards ceremony was uh, in the sanctuary of the, the United Methodist Church there in Grant, and uh, the ceremony went, and it was very nice. Uh, it was all over, and uh, I decided I would kind of go to the back of the sanctuary and kind of wait there uh, for the family and the scouts and everyone to kind of come out. So I'm looking ahead. All of the people I know, all the family, is in front of me. And as I'm standing there, I'm thinking I'm standing kind of with my back against the wall, but suddenly there's a voice that speaks from behind me, and it says, Doug, are you ready to get some cake? I'm sitting there like, now that's weird. That's really weird. I didn't know anybody in Grant, Nebraska, except the people in front of me. So I'm thinking, who is this? Well, it turned out to be the pastor at the Methodist Church. She knows me and has known me for a long time. But it was a reminder to me of this. No matter where you are, people are watching. People are watching, okay? So you need to think about that. And if you're a Christ follower... And if you let people know that like you go to worship or you showed up at a church sometime or other or if you're in a small group or if you serve the hungry in the name of Jesus, they, they will be watching you. People will be watching us. Now Zacchaeus was not a Christ follower and he didn't care if you were watching him or not. He just didn't care. Zacchaeus is an interesting person. He makes his living by cheating other people on their taxes. Now, taxes is bad enough, but if you know that you're being cheated by the person who is um, executing that for you, that's even worse. Now, Zacchaeus, that was his job. He was a tax person, but also what he had done is he had sold out to the Roman government. And what that meant was he had betrayed his people, kind of their own political system. He had betrayed kind of their culture, their kind of way of life, even some of their religious uh, beliefs and that kind of thing. That's Zacchaeus. He's a traitor when you get right down to it. He cheats people. He's oppressive. He is ob uh, abusive. That's kind of who he is. So when Jesus invites himself over to the home of Zacchaeus, the crowd is shocked. They're appalled that Jesus would go hang out with such a person as Zacchaeus. Now, there is this crowd of people who follow uh, Jesus along. We're just going to call them the church crowd. And the church crowd sees what is happening with Zacchaeus, and they begin to fuss. Now, you've never known church crowd to ever fuss about anything, have you? Okay, churches, church people don't fuss. But this church crowd did fuss because Jesus was going to go and hang out with a notorious sinner that everybody knew. Now, church crowds always have a mission statement. They always have a purpose statement. I think that's been true from the very beginning. And the purpose statement for a church is always the same, to share the love of Jesus with everyone. That's what churches say. That's what churches say. But in this case, this church crowd was wanting to redefine what everyone meant because they were so uncomfortable with the thought of showing hospitality and friendship with someone like Zacchaeus. So first of all, if you're a Christ follower and you let that be known, there are going to be people watching you. But the second thing is this. If you're a Christ follower and you let that be known, there are people who are waiting for you to invite them. There are people waiting for you to invite them. Think about Zacchaeus. He's up in the top of a sycamore tree, okay? He's, he's right up there, okay? 
He's up in the top of a sycamore tree. They said he is a really short dude, okay? He's a short little guy, so he's up there. And what's he doing? He's not up there to check on the flight patterns of geese or anything like that. He's up there waiting. He's up there waiting to be invited in. That's why he's there. And the amazing thing is that he is invited in. But what is even more amazing is this, that the one who is waiting to be invited in but wasn't is the one who extends an invitation and the people say yes. Pretty amazing thing. The church crowd would not invite Zacchaeus in, but he turns around and invites all of his business associates into his home and it's kind of an interesting environment that Zacchaeus creates you think about it here's a person he believes to be the son of God gonna sit down at the dinner table with a whole group of cheaters and crooks and people you can't trust and while they're at that table they're going to be exposed to the grace and the love and the mercy of the Son of God. Kind of an interesting kind of environment. But what we learn from Zacchaeus is even though he invites people into his home, even though he invites Jesus into his own home, and, and they're at dinner all together there, it, it's a little awkward sometimes. It's a little awkward, and, and Zacchaeus feels this pretty deeply inside. In fact, in verse 8 of the text, um, this is what it says. Zacchaeus stood there. Everybody else is seated at the table. Zacchaeus is just standing there because it's awkward. What, what, is, this, what is this Jesus who might be the son of God? What is he going to think about my friends who are not godly at all? It's awkward. And so he just stands there. And sometimes when, when we're in a really awkward situation, our mouth just begins to talk, okay? We just can't help it. it we just begin to talk to kind of fill the silence and the awkwardness with something. And that's what Zacchaeus does. Zacchaeus stood there. And then he says to the Lord, look, Half of my possessions, half of my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor. Now, let's put this in perspective. The Bible says that Zacchaeus was a very wealthy man. You think about our country today and what would be our definition of a very wealthy person. I, I think it's a big number. Okay, like multi-millions in today's. And he's going to give half of that away. And then he's not done. He's still feeling the awkwardness of this, of this whole environment. And so he keeps talking and he says, if I have defrauded anyone of anything, well, he's, he's defrauded everybody. He says, if I've defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay back four times as much. That's how awkward it is. I wonder what he was thinking when he went to bed later that night. Oh, what have I done? What have I done? I just said to the Son of God that I'm going to give it all away. It's a crazy thing, but that's how awkward it can feel sometimes when we invite someone in, whether we are the person who is invited in or whether we are doing the inviting. I know a couple of years ago, uh, I was gathering uh, some folks together and extended the invitations and people were saying yes and we were going to have uh, a dinner thing kind of down in the fireside room down the hallway here and uh, I had everything set to go, you know, I had the food, uh, you know, we had everything, everything was ready to go and at that time our, our associate pastor was Pastor Allison and she came into the room and she just asked a real simple question, you know, she said, do you need any help, Doug? And I said, with great confidence, nope, I've got it handled. And she left. And then she came back in about 15 minutes, and she asked the exact same question again. She said, Doug, do you need any help with this? 
And I was even more self-assured and confident then. I said, I've got it covered. I'm good to go right now. And she left again. And she came back the third time, just after just a few minutes, about five minutes. And she said, Doug, I'm not asking. You need my help. <laughs> and then she said something that really stuck with me. She said, uh, this is not your spiritual gift. Ooh, you know? Ooh, right? So, but it was just a wake-up call. I'm great at inviting. But when it comes to table decorations and pretty things and all, I'm not that good at that, okay? And I do need help. You know, it doesn't matter to me at all if you're sitting next to your worst enemy of all your life. It, I don't care, you know? It just doesn't matter to me. But it matters to some people and we want an environment that feels comfortable, hospitable, and where everybody can have a good time. So I've learned my lesson. I have to keep learning it, but I, I've learned it, that I need to ask for help. That's one of the things that when we're inviting people in, we don't have to do it alone. You know, we can ask for help. And so on uh, Sunday, April 12th, we're having a new member dinner. Okay, you can kind of see where I'm going with this, can't you? We're having a new member dinner, and uh, we're extending the invitations right now. Anybody that wants to come can come if they're interested in joining the church. But I've learned, so I asked the choir if they will kind of like, well, prepare the food, decorate the tables, make sure the seating arrangements are right, you know. Um, all that kind of stuff and they do it and they do such a fantastic job that they just know how to do it and it helps me out so much and it makes the experience so much better you know inviting people in what whatever we're inviting them into sometimes it's not easy sometimes it feels a little bit awkward and you may be one of those persons that God is wired up in a certain way that you're just kind of a little bit shy and so inviting people, that's not easy for you. And sometimes it's not easy for us because we're just kind of exhausted. We've just gone through a, a long season of really uh, hard work at the job and some challenges personally. And, and, you know, we're just exhausted. We're fatigued, like down to our soul. We just don't have the energy. It's not easy. And sometimes uh, we're around people all day long lots of people and lots of good people and a few challenging people and and we're around people all day so the last thing when we get home in the evening from work we want to do is like be around a lot of people and so sometimes it's not easy for that reason and sometimes like for me we just need to ask somebody else to help us to make it a little bit easier but sometimes too i think we're a little bit like zacchaeus when we get right down to it. We're a little bit like Zacchaeus uh, in this sense, that, that there's something in our life that maybe is just slightly out of alignment with the heart of God. You see, Zacchaeus feels this misalignment, and so what he does is he quickly confesses his sin, he quickly puts together an action plan to make restitution, he does all of this so that he can kind of bring his heart in alignment with God's heart and when he does that something special happens and the way Jesus says it is today salvation has come to this house today salvation has come to this house well maybe there's something in your life that needs just just a little slight realignment to get it just a little bit closer to the heart of Jesus and, and just to remind us because Jesus does in this story as well the heart of Jesus is very clear in verse 10 of the text it says for the son of man came to seek out and to save the lost that, that's what the heart of Jesus is that's the purpose of Jesus life that's why God the father sent him is so that he can seek out and save the lost and if that's not where our heart is, then there needs to be a little realignment, a little adjustment there so that we come into alignment with the heart of Jesus. So we start with this. People are always watching. If you have ever said that you go to a church, if you've ever said that you're a Christ follower, 
I guarantee you people are watching. Zacchaeus was sitting in a sycamore tree watching Jesus long before Jesus knew that he was being watched. The second thing is people are waiting to be invited in. Although he might never admit it, Zacchaeus was waiting to draw close to the heart of Jesus. And when that happens, then Jesus invites a spiritually lost man and his friends to draw close to the heart of God. Jesus seeks and saves the lost. So I want you to imagine something. I want you to imagine if you invited someone who is convinced that no one sees them, that no one cares about them, that no one wants them. Somebody like Zacchaeus. Imagine somebody like Zacchaeus that you know, and you invite them. Imagine that, what that might be like. A little awkward, maybe not always easy, but just imagine you did that. And imagine that you invited them to coffee, or maybe to lunch, or maybe to United Methodist Women's Circle, or maybe to your small group, or maybe to worship, or, or maybe to help serve the Salvation Army dinner. What might the Holy Spirit do? So imagine if the person you invite this week has been watching and waiting for someone to invite them, and they've been watching you, and they've been waiting for you to invite them. Let's pray. Lord God, we, we thank you that you sent your son, Jesus, with a very clear purpose, to seek out and to save the lost. People like Zacchaeus and his friends. People like me like all of us who are here. Jesus came to seek us out and to save us. And I pray, Lord, that you might align our heart with the heart of Jesus on this matter. And even when it's not easy, even when it feels awkward, I pray, Lord, that you would give us the strength and the courage and the conviction that we would invite in other people. Lord, we know that you will do a work in them. You'll do a work through us. And people will see your love. And they will draw near to your heart. We pray, Lord, you give us the opportunity. We pray that you give us the opportunity this week. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'll ask you to stand and we will.